Lonnie's Gemini Part 3, or, or is it a Colt now? I, well, it depends on what hood we go with. <laughs> okay, so uh, we're going to take a look at this colt today that we got at the swamp meet about a oh, little over a week ago now. Yeah. And... Uh, I don't know. We're going to see what parts we want to use. There's a question on the table. For some one lung racing, I don't think it matters in the Wild Bill, but in some race uh, races, you have to be 73 or older. Right. Which I think this is a 73 Colt. I'm not real sure. Looks like it. Yeah, I'd call it a 73. I don't know that there's anything on the tunnel that's going to tell us. <laughs> there is a there's a serial number and a model number, but I'm not sure. If we can find a model number, we can dig it up for sure. Yeah. Um, we know the motor's not in it. We're just going to look at it. Oh, yeah, I'm going to get out a hammer, and we'll see if we can break these drivers. Oh, that's right. Everybody's got to see that so they can understand the test Under, that we yeah, did. Yeah, right, right. Right, the driver drop understand test. Understand how wonderful it is that they were not breaking. Yeah, yeah, exactly. All right, so we'll start. We'll rip the hood off and tip it over. We'll go right into the do the driver's brake test. Yeah. Lonnie's trying to read the data plate and Daisy's saying, no, let's play instead. Okay, but okay. We got a nice data plate there. I think it says 73. Oh, we'll let the people read it themselves. Oh, yeah, and we got a patent plate there, too. Let me let me get my head down in there and see. September 72, so it 72. is a 73 Colt. Yep. And uh, judging by the chrome bumpers, chrome handlebars, it's a Colt SS. So, uh, I don't know, we'll just... Uh, Throw these loose parts out of here, and uh, I don't know. Lonnie, you want to do the honors? All tip right. it up. Daisy, here, tip it that way so the sun's she on it. She, she, she Daisy is field. part mountain goat. Come on, Daisy, get off the oh, sled. She's a, she's a, Come she's on. She's a snowmobiler. She's a sledder. <laughs> Go ahead and tip it. Jeez, Daisy. We are fully into the puppy era, aren't we? Yup, she is totally a sledder. All right, there's the drivers. There's the drivers, and they look horrible. horrible. They're cracked. They're broke. Watch this, folks. See how it's just cracking? Yeah. Oh, they are. There is a little bit of softness in there, but see that bounced a little bit. Yeah, but look at the chip. Yeah. I, I keep getting yeah, the sun in there, but there's huge chunks out of these. This one, this, this one one upper one. Yeah, yeah. This one's missing a tooth altogether. Yeah, these are shot. And so there's the test we do. If you if you hit it with the hammer and it does that, that's a bad driver. Don't use it. Get a new one. But then All right, we'll just want to show you the track here. Um you know we bought this thing for parts, so we're not too disappointed. No. The tracks in a lot worse shape than the other one. Yeah. Uh, the tunnel has got a lot more rust. The belly pan's a lot rustier. So, uh, I don't know. I think uh, I think we might use the data plate. <laughs> right? <laughs> um, seriously, we might, we might switch over and put this bumper and put the 73 hood on it. Um, yeah, what definitely the heck? a nicer bumper than the other one. The other one was all bent up, remember? Yeah. Yeah, so this one, we, I think we should definitely take that off there. I don't know how we get that into it. That's that from, uh, you unbolt that from the inside. Oh. Should we Should we drag the Gemini over and do a side-by-side -side comparison? Side -side. Yeah, Let's not? see if it'll fit. Yeah. All right, we're doing a little side-by-side -side here, and they are essentially the exact same deal. Um, you can see this one's got the older belt guard. We do like this 79 belt guard a little bit better. Um, as far as the belly pan goes and using the hood and bumper, this flange will have to get cut off right here, this flange. But uh, that's easily done. After that, or sure looks like it's the same belly pan. Yeah, I mean, we, just, we could just uh, take this strip off right here. It's just riveted. Yeah, we're going to do that. Rivet that off. Take that and just rivet it onto that one. Yeah, once we cut the flange off. Yep. The yep. flange is in the way. But other than that, boy, they look they look absolutely identical other than that. 
Um, the 73 does have some bosses where the bumper goes. Lonnie, I don't know. Do you like this 73 stuff better than the Gemini? I like. I mean, I like the bumper. Um, well, the bumper hood, bumper and hood, and that and trim hood, piece. All of that's kind of got to go together. That's a package deal. Yeah. 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 Um, I mean, yeah, you'll have to do a little mod or two to that tunnel to get that bumper to fit, but I think I think it'd be worth it. I know this guy with a welder. <laughs> Yeah, I think it'd be worth it, personally. Yeah, I, I think we do it. Um, oh, this does have a couple other nice pieces. So this is a little bit reinforced. Oh, that's loose. Yeah, oh, that's, it's supposed to be bolted. Yeah, it gets bolted, but, they, you know, it's got these It's got the, the, here. the can holders, yep. Yeah, yeah. So, uh, yeah, I'd say that, that it's still sort of a Gemini, but it's going to have a cold hood. Yeah. And that makes it a Colt, right? Yeah, in, my, in my book, it does. I think it's a Colt. That's a pretty good looking hood, too. That's a really good. Yeah. That hood was that hood was worth a good piece of um, a good piece of the asking price for the whole sled, if you ask me. Yeah, I think we can. I think we can salvage that for sure. Oh, that's one of the most solid Colt hoods I've seen, Lonnie. Yeah, that's, she's nice. That's never been repaired either. Look at that. Yeah. Holy smokes. Yeah, that's nice. It's, it's never even been repaired. Yeah, we'll we'll use this. Heck yeah, I like it. And I think I know somebody who might have one of these. Uh, you think? <laughs> yeah. uh, maybe Larry. <laughs> Larry. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, man. All right. All right. There you go. Well, that that's this segment here. Yeah. We, we all we were doing right now was deciding what parts to use and. We've decided. Yeah, we now have we gotta a plan. Got to go do some parts, take it off, and that sort of thing. And yeah, we should probably rip that Colt down at some point. I'm amazed at some right. of the old, the, the old stuff. All right, right Doc, there. we're filming again. Oh, we are. All right. So uh, I'm not sure where this video starts or what order it's in, but Lonnie was over here looking at the parts sled a few weeks ago. We might yeah. even we we might have even done that intro. Use that intro. If you don't see Doc in the uh, first yeah. early intro. Don't remember. But uh, <laughs> I think we filmed an intro back then. Yeah. And um, since then, I've started working on the chain case. Well, that video, was, that part of it that we filmed was figuring out what parts we used. Yep. Well, we've now figured out we're going to use this chain case most likely. The, yeah. the other one, especially the secondary clutch, had some issues. It's pretty grimy. So uh, basically, we're gonna tear this Colt that you can sort of see behind us. Yep. We're gonna yes. tear this thing down and turn it into parts tonight. Yeah. Lonnie, are we gonna make the Gemini into a Colt? I'm thinking that that's a, about the direction I want to go. I I like this hood and bumper like and stuff. The, yep. Yeah. So a little jolt. Yeah. <laughs> jolt. A gold. A gold. Yeah. yeah. All right, so we're going to just get after it and yeah. rip, rip this thing down and uh, we'll see what we can find. We'll bring you in when we get there. All right. All we'll right. Go. First step is opening up the chain case to get the gears out. Now, I already took I already took the secondary loose uh, just to make sure it wasn't stuck and that it looked good. I wanted to look at the snap ring groove here, and this is a way better secondary than the other one. So, yeah, there might be some oil. We'll throw a rag under it. Uh, I'll get I'll get a little oil pad to throw under there quick. There you go. All right, what do we got in there, Lon? Oh, uh, don't know yet. <laughs> yeah, turn these little buggers out. I sort of like the uh, wing nut chain case idea better than regular bolts. I don't it's know. Yeah, interesting. Uh, I like that rib cover better too. I think this whole chain case setup's looking pretty good. All right, well, let's see what we got in there. Where does it come apart? Here. Right there. Yep. Yeah, pull. Yeah. There you go. go. Ready? Yep. Oh, I don't want to wreck that seal if I don't. No, because uh, they, oh. they cost money. Good clean oil. Oh, yeah. All nice. right. The chain looks good. We got no rust. Uh, yeah. And that's not gear That's not gear oil either. Isn't it? No. That's oil oil. Nope, that's, that's chain lube. lube. That's chain lube, yeah. All right. The good stuff. So uh, we'll get those gears off real quick. And uh, once those are off, we'll pull the chain case off. And we won't have to fight with it this time because with the secondary loose, we can just slide it right off of this welded on bolt. Hey, Lonnie. Oh, yeah. We can tell that's welded on this time. You see the paint? Uh, I do see the that, paint. That was painted with the chassis. All right. Well, I'll get a little impact or something. We'll rip this thing off. Right on. 
Um, so anyway. Well, carriage bolts, Lonnie's giving it the old uh, reach around for the Got carriage me. bolts. <laughs> Gotta give her a reach around. So this adjusts your center to center? Yeah. Yeah. So and, that's, this, and this bolt is welded on. This bolt is welded there. That's what we learned the last time. Yeah. As we were trying to, like, yeah. <laughs> it don't come out. It did not come out. No. That's but, interesting. So. But yeah, you use this bolt to adjust your uh, your belt centers. All right. So with those uh, other those four nuts off, we just pop this thing off. Got it. We're gonna pull off these and uh, get those off, and then let me get a clipper and we'll cut the yeah, brake line. Get, get that brake line. Get you a pry bar quick. Oh, yeah. That's kind of that's very unique. All right, well, it's, so uh, here we go. About it, they've been doing this a long time. We're, yeah. we're just clipping this brake line because we're going to put a new plastic line on. Don't be cheap. Get a new plastic line. They're they're, they're not expensive. And then Lonnie's in there with the two bry bars, walking it off of the. Uh, really, Lonnie, you should only have to walk it off the bottom shaft, and yeah. it should come off. Yeah, she's... Why is it fighting you? She's, no, she's coming. Oh, okay. And just like that. So there we go. That is the chain case we're probably oh. going to use. And uh, we'll clean things up and we'll get back to that eventually with uh, finishing rebuilding the brakes. That chain case is way cleaner. Way nicer. That is way, way nicer. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, they definitely cost reduced it for the Gemini. With, <laughs> they, they took out a bunch of ribbing. And we all know ribs are for her pleasure. Yeah, that's right. <laughs> All right, we'll get back to ripping this thing apart. All right, Lonnie, what about the... Are we going to have to pull the track to get those bumper bolts out, or what? No, I think I can... Uh, you can give her the reach around again? <laughs> I can give her another reach around. You're the expert on that I, at this I'm point. Getting, I'm getting to be, yeah. Uh, yeah, I think that track is loose enough. I can push it up out of the way. All right. And what, I think I can get on them. What yeah, size... Uh, hand slender hands. <laughs> well... We, it's only four bolts to get the skid out, but they call, they call me Hans Hannah for a reason. <laughs> <laughs> All right, we'll get your wrench. I'm gonna see what those dogs are barking at. Right, uh, it says your other left. Yeah. All right, so here you can see. I think we showed you last time how bad these drivers are, but you tap them with a the hammer and chunks fly off. That's typical. Now down there, Lonnie's working on here. Point on the bottom one, quick, Lonnie. Yeah. Way down there, that's the bumper bolt. Yeah. Lonnie's getting that off, so that's why we dropped the skid out. But uh, we had a nice little bonus on this skid. The shafts are loose. Let me take you outside and show you. So here we are with this skid off of this part sled, and look at this. That shaft is just loose. And this front one, also loose. So uh, that's a huge bonus. So we got skids everywhere because uh, Mitchell Fruth also sent us a skid, really nice skid. And uh, that's this skid right here. So uh, big thanks to Mitchell on that. We'll definitely be able to put together a good working skid for this sled. For as much steel as is, that is in this sled, it's still lighter than a, an RXL or an extra late triple. It is, it is, but it's a Colt. <laughs> It's a it, it, it's bordering on a child sled, just like my AMF. Push the rear on that one. So if you, it's only going to get tighter. You're pushing it forward. If you haven't caught it yet, we're getting this bumper and this aluminum trim off because we're going to convert the Gemini to a Colt. Yeah, nice. Then nobody can argue. Hmm. Right. Might, might need this tag too. Might need to. Good thing it's riveted in. Yeah, for your convenience. Yeah. <laughs> all right bumpers out as you can see uh i got a couple of rivets to drill here lon have to grab that and... yeah yeah four rivets yep we got to get this uh, aluminum hood uh whatever you'd call it here we go yes one hood extrusion all, All right. That's damn near everything we're taking off this, ain't it? No, we got to get that rear bumper off too, I think. All right, let's get it off there. I think I like I think I like that rear bumper. That's pretty oh, yeah. sweet. That's pretty sweet. All right, 
that's about everything we're going to take off of there, so back to the graveyard. Hasta la vista. Oh. See ya. All right, Lonnie wants to learn how to rebuild the Colt chain case and the brakes. And I believe I even have the correct O-rings in stock, so we might just do this tonight. We gotta so, do brakes too? Brakes is part of the chain case rebuild. Do you see where the brakes are? They're part of the chain case. The brakes are part of the chain case. So, All right. so Lonnie, uh, first gonna thing we're gonna with? do, we're gonna get this cover off. So you gotta take off these five bolts. Okay, what are Six those? Bolts. Half inch? Yep, they're already loaded up. Now, oh, those came out real nice. This cover is pinned with, with dowel pins here and here. Okay. So it's kind of a pain. So, bar? Well, no. What I want you to do is flip it upside down. Flip it the other way. Yep. And uh, you're going to take the soft hammer, which I've got right here. Yep. Uh, I still have all my tools out from when I did this earlier. All right. Now. In a tap tap? Yep. Give her. A, let me hold this a little different. All right. Give her a tap. Yep, there we go. You can push that bearing right out. Keep going. There, there you, go. you go. So that's how you do that. No pry bars. There is nothing to stop that bearing from coming out except for the fact that this cover is bolted on. So now you can just pull that disc brake right off. Okay. So go ahead and do that. Yep. Pretty sweet, huh? That's not bad. That's not bad. Well, we now. Brake pad though. Well, oh, there's a key. We Hold probably on. will need brake pads. Yeah, the key, the yeah, key, the key came out for the little ah, shaft right, right here. here. Okay, yep. got it. We're good. The key came out. Now, okay. just what you did before, you're going to do it from here. Okay. You're going to knock that out. Yep, Doc will hold, help you hold it. And uh, you're going to knock that out. The bearing's going to probably come out, not the shaft. But either way is fine. Or not. All right. If it fights us too much, we go to the press. Go but to the I press or the I, vice. I, I hate to go to the press with this though because well, we got to find something bigger than the bearing. There's not a lot of room in there. No, yeah. we basically have to find like a piece of pipe big enough to drop that bearing through, and that's pretty tough because that bearing is more than two inches. So you need like a a piece of pipe two and a quarter diameter inner diameter to drop that bearing through. I'd say hit it some more. We got, uh, where's the free all? Let's... Free all? Maybe a torch. Swell up that aluminum a little with a little heat? Yeah, maybe. All right, let me get a torch quick. What are going to do here now? We're going to heat up that piece, so flip her over. You're going to heat it from this side? Yeah, it doesn't matter. We're going to make the aluminum get bigger. All right, but I'm not holding on to no, this. No, well, Doc that. hold it. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Doc's got the gloves. We're heating. Notice we're not right on the brakes, although... We are putting new O-rings in the brakes either way, but we'll just get that bearing off of there quick. All right, that aluminum should have expanded even from that. Give her a whack or two. <laughs> yup, sure did. I, I guess that worked. <laughs> so there you go, people. Uh, that mystery of the difficult Colt chain case disassembly should have just been solved. Heat is your friend. Heat yeah. is your friend. Yep, but except now I can't touch it. No, nope. okay. set her down. No. <laughs> We're going to go clean the carbs while we uh, let that cool down. There you go. Um, it came off yeah, or something. Yeah, there's space in the secondary. Okay. All right, Lonnie, so uh, grab your friendly socket here yep. and knock that bearing out. All right. You just use the soft hammer and that's it. Yep. All right, now the... This bearing, we just got to take off these three screws. All right, let me screwdriver. And these bearings are all 6205 2RS, just like all your suspension wheels are. One part number. That's what was available at the farm store in Roseau. There you go. <laughs> all right. So the legend says. Oh, these were actually loose. Well, that could have been dangerous. It's good yeah, thing we're going that, into look it. Look at that thing. It's just, yeah. Good thing we're into it. 
We'll uh, we'll give it a little Loctite when we uh, put her together too. Yeah, though. right on. I like that idea. All right. All right. Take that out and then yep. bang Flip it out from over. This side. Knock her through. Uh, I don't know if that socket's going to work. I don't think, I don't think work. so. I think they need a smaller one. Yeah, just grab it with the punch. That bearing's junk anyways. That's no. it. You. Nope. So, uh, let's see. This is this is about as far as we're taking this chain case. We don't have to take off that chain tensioner. I guess we'll take that off and then we'll clean this we'll clean this case out too. That's not a seal, huh? That's, oh, it uses a bearing seal. Yeah. It uses right. a sealed bearing. So we'll get we'll just knock this off quick and we'll okay. clean up the chain case. Then we'll start working on the brakes. All right, so the next thing we're going to do is we're going to get the brake pad out. This is the fixed brake pad right here. And, okay. oh, it doesn't really want to pull out with your fingers. That's no biggie. Flip her over, Lonnie. This brake pad, as I showed earlier, maybe I won't even show that other tear down. This one went so good. There's a set screw right here. Just thread it in, Lonnie. Get it in the set screw and thread it in, and it'll Which push. Way? Tighten it up. It'll push that brake pad right out. <sighs> Yeah, let's get the heat on it. It won't take much. That's probably enough. That'll probably help. Oh, heck yeah. Like a lot. Differential expansion. There you go. You knocked it out. Nope, that's okay. it. So. Well, that's how you adjust for a war brake pad. Just yep. Adjust it out. And so there's a metal backer in here. You don't want to lose that. Here's your pad. This pad is, it could work, but we'll get a new one, I think. All right. Okay. Next, we're up to this, Lonnie. This okay. is cooled off enough to touch now. So, what I want, what we got somewhere over here should be a snap ring pliers. Where is my snap uh, ring pliers? So, what I want you to do is press that washer down. There's a spring under that washer. Make sure it's loose. Oh, yeah. Yep. All right. So you press that washer down, and then, and then grab snap it. ring. All right. Snap ring the snap ring. You need cheaters? I'd need cheaters. Nope. All right. There we go. You need three hands on it. I know it's interesting trying to. I did it myself last time. Yeah. I can get it. Maybe. <laughs> Famous last words. Does that help? Well, the challenge is. Uh, you want to use two hands? Kind of like, no, it's all right. Just kind of like being a piano player. You got to. The left hand can't do what the right hand's doing. They got to be. They got to be. Are you trying to pat your head and rub your belly? Yeah. That kind of thing. All right, dang it. Get the. If I can get these in first. That's what I did. Yeah. There you go. You don't even necessarily have to push down, but it helps. Here you go. Lonnie like, got it, and he didn't even send the ring flying. Yay! So then we got a little spring, and then okay. you just push that piston out. Just uh, should move. If it doesn't move, just nope. give her a tap tap with where's that where's that punch yep probably got to hold it up a little bit got her doc yep hold her up a little bit you know what? where's that big socket you used on the bearing does that fit right around there i think it does oh yeah there you go all right oh yeah knock her down into that socket are you sure uh unless it's stuck She's heat. Stuck. Let's give it some heat. Oh, there's a washer. Catch that washer. There's a washer that goes under the spring. Did it, just, it come off already? No, oh, but it will. I saw it moving. Uh oh. Did it find? Did it find its way to the floor? Maybe that's not a washer. No, I don't think so. All right. All right. So we got the old aluminum corrosion. So let's give it a little expansion. Are you sure the problem is, is, what part of that's supposed to come out? Just that center post? Yeah, just that center post. Because this part right here is a part of the case. Yeah. Oh, the problem is they're both aluminum, so heating it won't necessarily do us any good. Yeah. Right. So Some lubrication. Uh, All right, here, you film for a sec, all? Doc. I'm going to do this. I'll get it, Lonnie. Yeah. I just did one. 
I know I can make it happen again. All right. I'm not going to let you hit with my hand there. No. I don't want that hammer. Oh, maybe that's what we need, a real hammer. Maybe we need a real hammer. Yeah. All right. So we're using this punch in the middle so that we don't smash those uh, snapping glands down. That moved it. That moved it for sure. There she goes. All right. Yeah, there we go. So we had a little corrosion in there. So here's what your rebuild consists of. Uh, number one, you, you need a new pad. And then um, we get two snap rings that are really hard to see right now because they're covered in dust. And I'll just poke my finger with that. That felt great. Yeah, I love that. Um, we get two snap rings. You mean O-rings. O-rings, yep. Yeah. So there we go. And uh, I actually know what size these O-rings are. And I've actually ordered up O-rings. Oh, hey now. Yep. There you go. So uh, we can rebuild this tonight. This be helpful. There we go. So we'll give it a little cleaning. <laughs> yeah. We'll get the corrosion off it. And then we'll put it back together. See, there's still a snap ring groove. It was just filled with corrosion from sliding through there. Yeah. Lovely. All right. Good enough. All right. We're gonna we're gonna take this apart and really get the corrosion out. So this maybe, is just maybe. a one inch open end. There she goes. There it goes. Yeah. All right. Not too bad. Yeah. I'll All get right. my uh, meter and an air gauge, or meter and a little air thing, and we'll check this switch, too. Right on. Uh, 7 sixteenths. Should be there. All right. We're going to show you how to pressure check the switch, or check the switch, period, I guess. So there shouldn't be any continuity. Yep, Lonnie, give her a little, just a little shot. Give her more. We got nothing. That one's junk. Nothing on the meter. Nothing changed. And the meter is set up right. See? So. Where's the other one? Good thing we got parts. Parts is parts. Parts. <laughs> Alright. So this one. I'm going to put it over here so we know that one doesn't work. This one might not work either. We might need a new switch. Yep. Come on, open. All right, give her a little bit of a shot right there. Hold it, hold it on. Just light. You got to hold it longer. So we got two bad brake switches. Had the brake switch work, here, show the meter. It would have done this when we uh, applied air pressure. So one more thing One more thing for the shopping list, Lonnie, if you want brake lights. Yeah. Skedaddler doesn't have any. Well, I mean, you know. <laughs> Who needs brakes? I'm, I'm probably not going to have anybody behind me. <laughs> yeah, except for the skedaddler. <laughs> the other one. Here we go. Well, these pads are oily from the other one. All right, that pad's stuck. All right, so we're going to go with this one here. So yeah. I've got O-rings. Uh, this is a 2-218, two, and very important, it's an EPDM O-ring. You want to make sure you get the right material for uh, brake fluid compatibility. And then this guy, this little guy, is an 012. So uh, those are your numbers. Both of them have to be EPDM. So just slip them on. Don't leave your O-ring in the snap ring hole. Now you need a little something just to make them slip in. So I'm just dabbing a little... Uh, you could use brake fluid, but I happen to have a little bit of chain case lube right there. Just enough to get them wet. So there's that. Okay. And then, oh, that's too tight. Yeah. that's That should slide in free up until the O-ring hits. All right. 
All right. That's, so um, uh, it's not that. It's this. Well, we should wire brush both of them, maybe. You now this is a big issue right here. Okay. All right, we'll be back after we clean these out. All right, a certain amount of sandpaper later. We're good to go. I think that'll work. All right, so back to the O-rings. Back to the O-rings. Got the, that one on. Puppies underfoot. We got this one on. And once again, the big O-ring is a 218. The little one is a 012. They're both EPDM, um, which is good for oil resistance. And you don't put them on dry. You got to give them a little something. I don't have much oil there. Here's a little more oil. There you go. You give them a little something, and I don't care that gear lube isn't compatible with brake oil, whatever. It'll be fine. Calm down. <laughs> so, there we go. Drop her in. Yep. Oh, that feels pretty damn good. There we go. All right, so, then. that's why you need the spring to retract it. So, those O rings are, you know, they're a little tight. This is good. They'll break in. But they'll be okay. They will be okay. All right, Lonnie. All right. Disassembly is the reverse of disassembly. All right. So that's got to go on. Yep. And this has got to go on. And then where's my little snap ring? There's your snap is. ring. I would preload that on the pliers. Yeah. That'd be a good idea. There's also a second snap ring there because we're doing best of two. <laughs> Yep, best of two. Three, two. Oh, it's in. I I saw it go in. The ends are close together. It closed in. Yep. All right. It's closed in. Now we're gonna try again. I'm just yeah. Keep your hands <laughs> yeah. That's it. We got brakes. Yeah, brakes. Yeah. All right. All right. So uh, hopefully we just took the mystery out of the Colt and <laughs> early T axes and uh, Cutlass SS and Cobra and every other early prior to 1980 Polaris that doesn't have a jack shaft and it isn't a band type cable brake. If it's a hydraulic brake from 72 yeah. on, this yeah. is it. So hopefully we helped you with that. I know it's a pain in the butt. Um, Dr. Mario, I believe, sells the parts for this if you can't find them. Uh, I think Dr. Mario actually often has these rebuilt and ready to go at swap meets. So, oh, yeah. Uh, there you go. Yeah, you can go back to my recent Dr. Mario video and figure out how to get a hold of him. Perfect. Nice. All right, next. Bearings. All right. All right. All right, well, while Lonnie's cleaning up there, I'll do the first bearing. Once again, 6205 2RS. Just like that. Okay. Here's your there. socket. Yep. Want me to hold this up? Yeah. Good enough. I think it's in all the way. That's in all the way. I, don't know. I felt it go home. All right. Okay. Next. Go for it. I think it might be in. That's in. Okay. You hear it when it landed. There we go. There we got a little bit. There, a little bit, of, a little dabble, do you? That'll work. Um, for the old, older folks in the audience, they'll know what uh, "little dabble do you" means. Where that comes from? Set my dad into flashbacks when you said that. I don't. Hey, now. <laughs> Rel cream. Use the other case because you know, best of two. All right, there just, you go. Okay. Just German torque them, good right. and tight. So, good and tight. We're getting near the end of what we can do tonight. 
Next, we got to put this in. Um, let me grab a hammer of some sort. Really, that's cool. Why is there? Why is there a big gap right here? Because there is. Look at this. Look at this uh, one, Lonnie. There's a step in there. Oh. So it won't go yeah, all the way down. Yeah, you you only see right. it to the step. Roger that. Yeah. So. Okay. There we go. You seat that in. Now we've got this. Uh, we've got this key that goes right there. And then, which uh, which 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 rotor is less disgusting? Oh, this one's got a key in it already. Oh, I put the key back. Let's in. take the rusty one instead of the greasy one. Yeah. Yeah. It's actually not that rusty. All right. Okay. Um, we shouldn't have done that yet. What did I forget? Flip it over, Doc says. But what did I forget? We got to put a brake pad in there first. So this is as far this is as far as we're going until we get <laughs> brake pads. We're done. We're done for the night. But you get the idea. You put in your brake pads. Um, you throw on this rotor. You uh, put your other brake pad in here, and you put this piece on. That's it. Tighten her all back up. Bolt her down tight. Roger that. Easy breezy. <laughs> All right, get in here, Doc. All right, we're calling that a wrap on the Gemini for today. Hopefully, yep. you learn how to rebuild the Gemini chain case. That was an interesting uh, experience. I, that, that's not anything like anything we've done before, so um, I'm glad we did that. Uh, again, if I'm gonna if I'm gonna run one longer, um, I'm gonna have to learn how to do all this stuff. So those, thank you. Yeah, those brakes are pretty unique on there, and I really wanted to get that out there for all the people working on the older '70s Polaris's with that style brakes. It's good to know how to do it. It's good to know you can do it. It's good to yeah. know you just need a couple cheap O-rings to fix the, you know, fix that leaky brake system up. Yep, yep. Easy, simple, yeah. Yeah. Right. So uh, with that said, huge thanks to Doc for coming yep. out and lending a hand tonight. Thanks, Doc. No problem. And uh, Doc brought out a skid that he got from Mitchell Fruth. So, uh, Mitchell, big thanks to you, buddy. Thanks, we, buddy. We appreciate it, and uh, we'll be incorporating that skid into the build. I think we got enough skid parts now to make go of it. We might actually Absolutely. get one good skid out of three. I bet we still <laughs> throw a set of rails in the campfire to get the old slides off. Yeah, somebody needs to do that. Yeah. I'll bring the marshmallows. <laughs> I wonder how marshmallows over that burning <laughs> plastic, but uh, they'll taste a little uh, like plastic. <laughs> so, anyways, big thanks to the patrons. Uh, patrons are our are, uh, are, are main supporters of the channel. You see their names up there right now. Um, they support us every every uh, month with a little donation, and in return, they get all to watch all the videos early. They get to watch them ad free. And lately, I've been pretty good about getting some Patreon-only content out there for them, too. Yeah. So, uh, and if it looks like the camera's <coughs> moving, that's the dogs. Uh, anyway, everybody else, hit subscribe. Make sure you're still subscribed. Um, for some reason, YouTube unsubscribes people. We don't understand why. We don't know. Double check. Hit the notification bell so you know when new videos are coming up. Yes, we are going to have more videos about triples. Remember, I bought that Ultra this summer? Oh, you yeah. didn't think that was the end of triples and the end of the Ultra. It's just that we got to get these one longers done and ready so we can get some miles on them. Got to do things in the order that we have to do things. I know you all want to watch videos in the order you want to watch them. I'm sorry. This isn't a professional shop. This is just us after work out here. What do you mean not professional? Well, we're not. <laughs> It's just us, at, you know, we've all got day jobs and we're just out here after work doing what we got to do. We only got so many hours in the day and only so much budget to crank this stuff through. And right. we got to get the one lungers done so that we can get some miles on them and get yeah. them tested. As you ready can, to go. Yeah, as you can see, they're both pretty good sized projects. Lonnie's is an even bigger project than the Skedaddler, which is still here. It's still there. So, yeah. uh, all right. Thanks, people. Thank you.